Ooh, and welcome to the grand return of Courted Claims Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. The thing is, although Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop never really went away, I haven't really been able to do much in Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop because you may remember that I had all my stereo equipment on top of this bench. Well, I've now moved all of that down here, as you can see. Still got a little bit of tidying up to do. But anyway, um, let's get on with the Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop episode. I got these headphones the other day because my old ones were pretty much falling to pieces. And I've got to say, I'm not quite impressed with the sound quality. Because, as some of you might know, I like to make my own music. So I've got these headphones, so I can monitor everything closely. But these make terrible monitoring headphones. There's too much bass, and barely any mid-range. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to make a parametric equaliser. It's only going to be mono, but... That's all right. Let's take a look at the circuits. And is it, if I can remember how the hell to use this thing, I don't know. Um, I've got two weather forecasts up here. Um, right. This is why I am not a 21st century person. I do not have hardly things like this confuse me. All right. So here is the schematic I'm going to use which is from Elliot Sound Projects. Thought I'd better credit him because in the last video when I used one of his circuits, even though I credited him in the video description, people were still whining that I didn't. So, again, this schematic is not my own. It's from Elliot Sound Projects, from their website. And that's the circuit I'm going to build. Now I finally figured out how to get that website up on here. And although using one of these, you might be thinking I'm contradicting what I was saying in my rant about cell phones. Well, this isn't a cell phone, this is a tablet. And I'm not addicted to it. I just use it if it's convenient. And it's something I rarely use anyway. Alright, so let's build this thing. So I've got a couple of op amps here. One of them is a TL072. The other one's an NE5553 because I need essentially three op amps. And since this one is two op amps in one chip, that gives me a total of three. The only real difference is that I don't have any 10k potentiometers. The lowest ones I've got are 20k, which is this one here and this one here. But for one of them, I don't need a dual gain potentiometer. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to short the pins together. So this pin and this pin, then this pin and this pin, then this pin and this pin. And that will make that into a 10k. And some of this is going to be done with point-to-point -point wiring. And some of this is going to be done on the board. Right, so I've done the point-to-point -point wiring. This one is going to be the frequency selector potentiometer. And this one is going to be to select how much I want to boost or cut. A lot of you might be asking, why am I building a circuit like this when I could just use a tone control? Well, here's the thing. But that's not the thing. The thing is, every speaker has its own resonant frequency. You might have heard me talking about that with Tesla coils. It's a similar thing going on with speakers. They have a certain bump in the frequency spectrum that they're most responsive to. It's usually in the low frequency range, unless it's something like the little beeper on your microwave. In that case, it's got a very high resonant frequency, but with a tone control, there's no way to select the frequency that I want to boost or cut. Whereas if I build one of these, I can tune that to whatever frequency these headphones are most sensitive to, which is probably somewhere around 80 hertz or something like that, maybe 60 hertz. And I can cut that back and get a much more even frequency response out of my headphones. 
And that way, when I'm mixing all the instruments in my songs, I can get a much better idea of what the mix sounds like. Because just everything, everything sounds far too bassy through these. Everything does. That's the plan anyway. Anyway, the next step is to put the chips on the board and then wire this up to it and we'll give it a little test listen. Okay, this is take two of this and hopefully the camera's white balance will not try to compensate for the colour of the bench. Anyway, I'm sure under this mess of wires we have a parametric EQ. I haven't put the chips in yet because I want to do that last of all. All I've got to do now is attach the audio cables and the power connections and we can give this a little bit of a test run. Now, it might not work exactly like the schematic, but... Oh, it's turned itself off, never mind. I'm sure, as you remember, I don't have the right value potentiometers, so it might not perform all that well, but we'll see. Right, well, here it is, the completed circuit. So, I'm going to power this up. Oh, wait a minute, something doesn't look quite right here. Oh, that chip should not be there, that should be there. I've just noticed that. I put the two chips in each other's sockets. If I'd have powered it up like that, I would have been sorry. Let me just correct that. Well, here it is, with the chips in the right sockets. My camera is bugging me to point out something white to do the white balance, but I don't care. So let's plug this in and give it a listen. And this is probably where everything will all go wrong, and if it does, then this video won't end up on YouTube. Alright, it's time for the moment of truth. And like I said, I don't have the right potentiometers, so it might not perform as good as it should. And also, I didn't have 5.6k resistors, so I've had to use 5.1. Shouldn't matter too much, though. So first, I'm going to start this up. Now I'm going to turn on the power. I've put capacitors in line between this and this, and also between this and the amplifier. Okay, I got some stuff, so let's see. let's see. If anything plays, is it playing? I don't hear any sound. Well, I know it's not supposed to sound like that, so let's. Okay, it's, something's not right there. Okay, well I think I'm going to change my name to Freddy Fudge Up. There's one little connection that I missed right there, which I've put in, which is this connection right here. After about 10 minutes of trying to get this website to come back up on my tablet, I decided to give up and just bring it up on the computer because it's just much easier. Well, fix the fudge up and no more distortion. Um, now if I could just stop this thing playing. Uh, I don't know how to stop this. Um, okay, I'll just have to close it if I can figure out how to do that. No, I have absolutely no idea how to stop this playing, so I'll just have to shut it down. I mean, I press the stop button. And it does something else, so I don't know. The only other thing is there is a little bit of buzz through the speakers. Might be able to hear it a bit closer through the tweeter. But that's the least of my worries. Alright, so I've gone over to my other microphone, which is over here. Because that's mixed in with the output coming from this, and it would just be much easier to record from that microphone. 
And I found out that I can actually pause a song that's playing on this, so uh, I guess that's kind of like a stop feature. But anyway, doing it this way, we can have a direct hookup so you can hear what it actually sounds like. So, let's find a song to play. I'm going to play that one because I'll really get to copyright. Maybe not. No, I don't think so. This is a story of a very unusual boy with a very unusual name, but let's not get into that. I'm gonna twiddle this, and then I'm gonna twiddle this, so we can hear the difference. So I'm going into the reduce. Okay, now that changes. It's not tinny now. only letting the really, really high frequencies through. Now it's not letting the high frequencies through at all. So I'm going to turn this back. Because the output seems to be quite greatly reduced like that. And let's go through this. things but gonna call this a success I know there's a little bit of buzzing in the background there's not much I can do about that that's simply because it's all out in the open and it's picking up interference from everywhere so yeah when that's in a salt box I'll work a lot better but I think we have a parametric EQ and until next time goodbye <laughs>